what I'm going to do is show you how to um, totally change it out. I have gloves in the drawer. Um, also, I have a list of, on this sign-up sheet, um, on the reagent change sheet, I have on the bottom exactly the positions of all the reagents, plus I have each container labeled, and I um, have put little notations about um, when to change them and um, what, you, um, what you should do with that. So you can take a look at this sheet and as you go along. All right, so this is uh, three tracks, and you can lift up this like this, and then you can slide them both down, and that gives you full access to all the buckets. So I'm going to throw on some gloves here. Now, you don't need um, nitrile gloves necessarily for these, and if you want them, you can, because I use xylene substitute on this um, machine, because in this small room, the xylene would, would be intolerable. Um, we use Slybrite clearing agent. Um, this particular xylene substitute um, says that it's um, safe for pouring down the drain. It says mix with water before disposal or pour down the drain with running water. So this xylene substitute will remove the paraffin from your slides when you're staining um, for staining um, and it's not harmful. So it says it's an effective um, alternative to xylene. It contains no carcinogens or toxins and is classified as non-flammable. So that seems to, it's been working very nicely for our group. The only thing about this is, this xylene substitute, it is not good for cover slipping. And when we get to cover slipping, I'll talk more about that. So these first um, three buckets right here, I'm gonna turn on the water. I like to keep the water running as I'm changing this because I'm going to be continually dumping things. So this first two here are clear. And of course at the end I have two more of this um, slide bright xylene substitute. So I'm going to start with those. Again, I like doing things in order. So I'm starting with the um, clearing agent. I'm going to dump those then refill them. Do not rinse these containers with water, these clearing ones. Um, and do not rinse the 100% alcohol containers with water. Now I, I go in order so it helps me to keep track of what I'm doing and, and then I don't have a mix up on the machine. When you open these bottles there's a plastic, um, they got a safety cap on them. There's a little plastic thing and that's to help so it doesn't absorb water from, from the air. You fill these up to the very first line in here. In the buckets, they have, a, they have two lines. You only need to fill it up to this um, first one. You really don't want to overfill these um, containers because when it gets to the 100% alcohols and stuff, if it doesn't rinse all this xylene substitute off the slide, it can leave streaks on your slide. Now the last bucket, because I'm going to carry it in for cover slipping and stuff, I even fill it um, like maybe a quarter of inch, quarter of an inch or so below that line, because it just doesn't need that much. Um, maybe even a half inch below that line. You just don't need that much in this bucket because um, we're going to be carrying the bucket into the other room for cover slipping. If you want to fill it, that's your prerogative. It doesn't, it, it doesn't hurt anything really. But that's just what I do. I'll make sure I can get this off. Okay. So that's the. Um, these are used for deparaffinizing. These, this um, Safe Clear or Slide Bright. This particular one is brand is called. 
and you have to deparaffinize in order to get your slide stained. You have to get all that paraffin off and that's what that chemical does. All right, so I'm finished with those. Now I'm gonna, um, I like kind of keeping things neat as I'm going along, so I'm gonna wipe up that residual stuff off the counter. It's a little bit oily, kind of dry and oily. This room is very dusty. As I'm in here, you know, people are kind of messy and just to be um, good neighbors, I tend to wipe down the counters and, and clean up a little bit. All right, my next um, thing that I'm going to change is the 100% alcohols. So that is in um, station three and four. And the 100% alcohols are also in 14, 15, and 16. And you can look on that sheet and it will show you that. So now these alcohols tend to get a little bit of pink from the um, ESN that carries over. So I try to keep those in the same general spots. 14, 15, and 16. Okay. Again, do not rinse these 100% alcohols or the xylene substitute containers with water. Also on this stainer, there's no need to um, use the good reagent alcohol that I use for processing. You can just use um, the bulk alcohol from the dock that works out just fine. And this is bulk alcohol that I refilled bottles with from the dock. Again, you're going to fill those. You can fill these slightly above the line in this case. It's not a big deal on these. Um, as long as it, you, know, you want it to rinse off that xylene substitute is what you really want it to do, for sure. Or you want it to um, rinse off, start dehydrating the slides, preparing for the xylene substitute at the end. Here, so a little bit above the line is okay on this. These containers are not pretty much all the alcohol. Okay. I have to actually run and go get some more alcohol. Now these bulk alcohols, they could be in these plastic bottles. Sometimes I've had the doc fill up some um, of the bigger brown bottles. As long as it says 100% ethanol or 100% ethyl alcohol, that's the ones you want to use. If you don't have the bulk alcohol, you can use the reagent alcohol. It just costs us a little more on the... Um, on the hazardous shipping charges to have that brought in. All right, so we'll put those back in so we know that those are indeed 100% alcohol, so that is good, and then we'll put these in their spots. Oops, got a little bit of spill there. In the hurry. Okay. Well, I want to get these other alcohols changed, but I know it's going to take me a little time to filter this hematoxin, so as I'm going to start filtering that while I'm changing the others. Um, I keep over by the sink um, this graduated, uh, this flask here, and I also have a funnel. I use only paper towels are good enough to filter this hematoxin. It just gets rid of the... Um, the metallic sheen on top that hematoxylin tends to get at times. So when I'm changing the machine, I just automatically always do this. Now this hematoxylin is pretty fresh. I looked on the, um, my list over there and I saw that when the last time I gave this um, fresh hematoxylin, so I'm gonna continue using this particular hematoxylin. If it were not fresh or if it was getting old, what I would do is I would fill it up to um, 
maybe like 570 is enough is about the right amount for this container you want this to be a little below that first line you don't want it above the line the reason is you don't want to carry hematoxin over um, you want it to get rinsed good in the water and about 570 in that water is about the right um, depth for it to rinse it the sides good so you'd fill it um, with um, fresh hematoxin to about 570 now our protocol we use protocol brand hematoxin it says it's acidified but I found that still it, it does a real nice job if you add some glacial acetic acid to it so what I do is I add um, about 570 or not quite 600 and I do one pipette full of glacial acetic acid into that bucket. Um, this is about three mil. So what it's averaging out to is about um, one mil per, for every 200 mils of hematoxin. I give that a little stir and it seems to make our hematoxin a real nice blue that we, we like to see. Okay, so for this container, I rinse it in the water and then I'm gonna take my acid alcohol that I have that's dirty on this um, processor. I'm going to take the acid alcohol and I'm actually going to pour it in here to start cleaning this hematoxylin container. It's a good way to get a second use out of our acid alcohol. So here's our acid alcohol container. So I'm going to pour that um, use. Usually it's quite yellow. I'm changing it um, a little earlier than I normally would because I want to, um, for this taping purpose, but usually this acid alcohol is more yellow. I'm going to pour it into this container to get some of this extra um, hematoxylin off the edges. And I might even put just a little bit more in here. I have made up some bulk acid alcohol. So what you're going to do, it's, um, this is, 0.5% um, acid alcohol in 70%, I'm sorry, 0.5% hydrochloric acid in 70% alcohol. And I've marked it on the bottle, so you fill it up to, um, with alcohol, 100%. You can use the, the bulk ethanol from the dock up to this line, fill the, um, with water up to the next line, and then add 17.5 mils of hydrochloric acid. You know, if it was 18 mils, you know, 17.5 to 18, that's okay. You're still fine. Okay, so I'm just going to add just a little bit more of that into this container to get it up to the level of where the scummy part of that hematoxylin was and let it start doing its work on cleaning this container in the sink over here while I'm moving along. Now, the other thing is I'm going to want to rinse this container really, really well. I don't want acid... Um, this HCL in this container affecting my hematoxin staining so make sure that you're flushing that for a little bit longer. Okay, now I know that my eosin is actually, um, let's see, the last time my eosin, oh I did change it fresh. I could keep the eosin but for our purposes I'm going to um, show you this and I'm going to dump it also. So now eosin tends to get a scummy little film around the edges also. A neat trick is we have our um, bluing solution, which I make up, and that is um, ammonium hydrox. No. Oh, I don't know what I do with it. Oh, okay, here it is. It's 0.3% ammonium hydroxide. Now, the old bluing solution that we have on the stainer, that can be used. Um, that can be used to um, to clean off this um, this eosin that's around the edges there. It looks like that somebody. I don't know if I just did that. But it looked like the bluing was actually in the wrong spot, but maybe I just did that. Hopefully it wasn't that way for staining. 
okay, the blue ink container actually does get a little bit kind of a scumminess into it. So you can rinse it and um, kind of wipe it out with a paper towel. But that kind of scumminess tends to stay. Okay. So I kind of wanted to get those things soaking, those containers, while I changed the rest of the alcohols. Anyway, you can see about how much of my container held of the hematoxylin. Now, because it's um, a, just kind of a rotation and a filter, I still like to add a little bit more of the actual fresh hematoxylin to it. I'm not going to add more acetic acid, but I just wanted to kind of freshen it a little bit, even though I'm actually going to end up pouring a little bit down the drain, probably like 20 or 25 mils. But it just freshens this little bit here. Now the next time I come for a full change, I'm going to fully dump the hematoxylin, add three mils of the glacial acetic acid, give it a stir, and then throw it on there. So it'll be about 570 mils of fresh hematoxylin. Okay, moving right along. I've added, I put the, here's the acid alcohol. We'll fill that container since it's empty. Now uh, this one, you put about at least a quarter of an inch below that um, first line. You do not want to go above the line at all. The reason is the acid alcohol, you want to be rinsed very, very good. It's another one that if you don't rinse it good, it'll give streaks on your slides. So keep it what, about a quarter of an inch below that first line. Okay, so there's our acid alcohol. That's done. I'm going to put it back in the, in the way back so I don't get confused. Um, I'm going to get some of my bluing and probably put a little more in that container here. Start soaking. You can kind of see it just eating off the, um, the eosin along the edges of the container. It just is kind of draining it. It takes it all right off nicely. All right. Then I'm going to wipe that out with a paper towel. And kind of let these containers dry a little bit. Wipe the S the hematoxin out. I'm going to let that be rinsing for a little while with running water. Okay, moving right along. Let's put some bluing into this container. Now this container, if you filled a little more with bluing, it's not going to hurt anything. So you can bring it up to the line. And that's done. Now, just so you don't get confused, it is on this chart here, but um, the stainer, it goes into the hematoxylin, then it goes into this acid alcohol, then it's going to rinse with water. Because I put the acid alcohol um, in front of the hematoxin because when it's lifting up the slides, I didn't want it to dribble acid alcohol into any other reagent. So I put it before the hematoxin so it would go right into water and, and not have that problem. And then from the water it's going to um, go into bluing and then it's going to go into water again. So that's the arrangement. So the hematoxin is going to be in the middle of the acid alcohol and the bluing. Okay, next. I'm going to um, do the 95% alcohol. Now we have 95% alcohol in the um, number 7, number 13, and the number 5 position. So there's 95 here. And they're all marked on the containers. You can just kind of look. It's almost a no-brainer. Now again, because this one is really pink, I'm going to kind of keep that container in that same spot. This is good for now. 
and you can rinse, um, you know, 95% alcohol. And stuff. You can rinse the other containers. It's only that um, xylene's and 100% that you cannot rinse. And we'll get this 95% alcohol. Again, I keep a um, container of 95% alcohol and I have it marked so you can um, make it up. And you can fill these up to the line or above. It, it won't hurt anything either way. Looks like I need to make more of this. Okay, I'll make more of that in just a little bit. I'm going to set this aside temporarily while I keep going along. Okay, so next I'm going to do my 80%. And that is in the 6 and the um, 9 position. Again, the containers are fully marked. And I, again, have made up 80% alcohol, so you fill up the line with, with the bulk alcohol, and then water, and then shake it. Okay, I'll put that in the back under here. Put these in their correct spots. So this, there's an 80% alcohol before the ESN because um, ESN seems to have a crisper um, change in color and stuff when it goes into alcohol before it goes into ESN. All right, so now this is done filtering, so I'm going to throw this paper towel away in the garbage, kind of bring it over to carefully to the garbage, give everything a rinse, this funnel a rinse, and hang it up. And I got my hematoxylin container that I cleaned, so I'm going to wipe that out. I don't want a bunch of water in it. It won't hurt anything a few drops of water, but might as well not start out that way. And I'm going to fill it a little below the line and if there's a little bit left over I'm going to actually get rid of it because this was a mixture of old and new. I don't want to put it back in the bottle. Not to mention I've added glacial acetic acid or the last time I changed it. So again this could be like a quarter of an inch below the actual line. Again, I'm going to rinse out our container. Just for today only, since I'm getting a little bit low on the 100% alcohol, I'm going to go ahead and make up 95 by using um, this rinsed out flask. You know, if it wasn't absolutely perfectly 95, that would be all right at this point because when it's coming down it's basically um, just rinsing the eosin out a little bit you know taking some of it out I mean it's better if it is but you'd be okay I know some technicians that will actually pour the alcohol in and just put a dribble of water in and do it that way and not be quite so exact I don't do that I'm using RO water for distill, but do not use the tap water for this because then it tends to get a little bit of growth in it. I'll give it a stir here for just a minute. Make sure it's mixed well with the water. All right. And now I, I think I'll just pour this last little bit of 95% in back into this bottle to save for another day. Not waste it. If somebody comes in and wants to do one change of the one after the eosin, they'd have just enough to do that. Okay, so now we're at the eosin. 
This is our ESN. Usually this company's ESN is a little bit of a brighter color. It kind of came to us this kind of darker color, but it's been working nice. I don't know what the formula change was that made it this dark color. But if it comes to you and it's a lot brighter in the future, um, we've had it like that also, and it's worked fine. So... Now, Eason tends to dribble. You try to pour it, and it's dripping down the sides of the bottle. So keep that in mind. I always do that. I never pour it over in this way for that reason. I do this over the sink. And I definitely dry out the container. I don't want water in my Eason. It actually creates a precipitate having um, extra water in the Eason. You want to avoid that. And I also wipe the outside of the bottle before I put it back in the cabinet. Otherwise, you just end up with eosin everywhere. It's not a fun stain to have everywhere. And again, you fill it about a quarter of an inch below the line. And as you can see, it, it, it certainly did dribble, even, if, even though I poured it carefully. It's just the nature of the chemical. Get this lid back on. And I want to wipe. I can see I got just a tiny little bit on the outside. I'm going to get that off. I don't want to start off with a dirty container. Oops. Okay. And now we have a fully changed processor. Um, these are our water reservoirs. There is a little um, spout in the bottom here. You want to make sure that that hole fits over the spout. And there's two little grooves. And then there's a, um, a little metal um, sticking up there that those little grooves fit into. So you want to place those in properly. Now I take these out after, after every staining. Um, and I leave them out because this thing will get mold all on the bottom of it, caked in, and that would be really bad for your stains. And it could actually show up on your H&E, and it can show up in special stains later. So make sure to fit that over the hole, that it's flush, and that they're nicely seated. And now we have a nicely uh, changed processor. I'm going to put these lids out of the way on the side here. I'm sorry, I keep calling this processor. It's not a processor, it's a stainer. We have um, a nicely changed stainer, automatic stainer. And, it, and that, I think, creates confusion for people that I interchangeably call it that. So um, keep in mind, this is our automated stainer. Even if I slip up and call it something else. Okay, and I'll put this a little bit 100% down here. And I'm going to close these. Now, I'm going to talk about um, actual staining here in just a second. But I also, again, remember I was telling you, I like to wipe up everything. So I've got water dripped and dribbled all over the back here. And I see that this um, film processor has got some little junk here. So might as well, like I said, be a good neighbor and wipe all that up because that's going to put all kinds of water spots and film all back here. It just makes it nice. And then once in a while you see that um, they have gel, residual gel all over here. So I, again, give this a nice wipe. And you saw that I wiped up this counter. That also helps to keep down the dust. Okay. So after every staining, staining, you take out those water reservoirs and put them off to the side because just to avoid mold. Now let's talk about actual staining. I'll open this up again. Over here, um, first off, let me tell you, I have these exact step-by-step -step instructions sitting right here and copies of these instructions are also in the lab. The button to turn on the stainer is right here. It's a black button, on-off button. It's the only button on the side here. 
What you want to see is you're going to watch this arm initialize and you're going to watch water come into the buckets. Now, if the stainer is already on and you come in here, you may not see water in the buckets because it may have drained out. The water doesn't stay in those buckets. It drains out until it gets close to when it's going to be needed. But initially, as it's initializing, it brings the water into it. If water does not come into those reservoirs when you turn on the switch, that means somebody may have turned off a water supply over there or there's some other problem. So get um, somebody that's trained and knows what to do um, for that situation. Anyway, here we go. It's going on. Okay, so the reservoir is filling with water and the arm is initializing and moving. And that's exactly what you want to see. Whenever you stain on this stainer, remove every lid because a crooked lid will jam the arm and that'll create some problems for you. If you jam this um, stainer, um, take off all the lids, do whatever you need to do, make sure all these buckets are seated properly because that could jam the um, processor or, or the stainer also. So make sure they're all seated correctly. The first thing you can try is to turn the machine off Wait um, 20 seconds and then turn the machine on and hopefully it'll come back to the home position and reinitialize again. If not, you may have actually damaged the machine itself and the arm itself. So now this um, automated stainer holds three racks. You can stain one rack at a time, you can stain one slide at a time, or you can stain up to 60 slides at a time. Or if you want, if you have it automated doing it, you can hand dip your slides. I don't recommend that, but you you certainly could do that and do even more slides at a time, but kind of stops the convenience of it doing it for you. Okay, let's just, um, it'll hold three racks, so you can put them in here. You put the little handles on, there's little holes on the racks. It doesn't matter which way you have them turned. You just put the um, handle in the hole and then you snap it down like that. And then here's the third one. So you put one end in the hole and then you put the other down. And so now um, I actually happen to have some um, control slides that I just put over there for our demonstration purposes. So I'll put a couple slides in here. Now again, you can put up to 60 and they would all fit on this rack like this. Now if you're staining one or two slides, it doesn't matter which um, arm um, tab you put them on but just to show you what, it, what that would look like it would be like this okay so today we're just going to do um, just our two control slides and I actually recommend that you do a control slide to make sure you didn't mix up a rage or something your stains t turning out the way you expect it to I keep these handles in um, the, at the end of this um, stainer and I keep maybe a rack down at the end here. If the handles or these racks were not here, you would usually find them under the, the hood by the processor where I do my cover slipping. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so now we're ready to focus on the actual menu and getting it actually staining. All right, so off to my right, I'm, I'm, we're focusing on the actual menu itself, but I'll verbalize what I'm actually doing. There's actually a scroll menu that scrolls up and down, left and right, but of course it's not gonna go left and right at this point. Um, I have 10 programs and I have it taped with red tape in the front of the machine, the different programs and what they do and the different options so you can know what type of staining from a dark stain to a medium to a light. Number four I have just for deep paraffinizing only so you can do immunohistochemistry or some special stains. Um, number five I have it set up as a as a quick hematoxin counter stain if you've already done um, immunohistochemistry and you just wanted a light hematoxylin counter stain so I have it set up for that. Number six and number seven I have set up for people to mess with and change and adjust their stain to their preference as they see fit. I really do not want people to mess with um, 
programs one through five. So I'm going to show you with um, program six what that looks like and I'm going to go to edit programs so I've um, actually scrolled down to number two where it says edit programs and I'm going to push enter because I want it to um, show me program six. Okay now I see that the menu says program two. Well program two isn't what I want to fool with. I want to fool with program six so I'm going to select six at this point. Now you have to do this right away and you have to push the number six off to the right because if you bypass this and scroll down it doesn't let you go back up to the two unless you exit out and start again with edit menu at this point. So I'm going to push six and so that's the program I want and now I'm going to um, scroll down and see what I have for six. So it's got xylene, xylene, absolute ethanol, absolute ethanol and it, it clearly says each station so it's step one it tells you what it's doing and what station number it's going into for each each um, step. I'm going to go down to the hematoxin because the two main things that we're going to change here are the hematoxin and the eosin. Now I happen to have program six, um, the hematoxin is only for two minutes. Well, that's not enough. Maybe I want it three minutes. So I'm going to scroll to the right, pushing the up, down, left, and right. I'm going to push the right button and it's going to jump over to the time. And again, I'm just going to punch in three minutes and make it say three, three, zero, zero. And then I'm going to hit enter, which is a, a large button off to the right. Okay, so now I see that my hematoxin is going to be for three minutes. And I'm going to scroll, keep scrolling back until it gets down. Then after hematoxin, it's going to wash and then it's going to go into hydrochloric acid. Oh, well, maybe I want it to be in the hydrochloric acid just a little bit more. Maybe I want three seconds, not just two, because last time I didn't like clear up the slide enough. So again, you can just scroll it over and make that three seconds. So I'd go zero, zero, three. Now it's three seconds, and then I'll push enter. Now you can either push enter or you can, again, or you can scroll over there. I'm going to just scroll over. Anyway, you get the idea. It's pretty self-explanatory, this machine on changing things. Once you go to the edit, you can scroll down and, and make your change for the time. And there's also a manual for this machine. So you can look at that if you have any other questions. But it's really quite simple. I think that eosin for 40 seconds is a little strong, I th at least for this particular protocol eosin. So I'm going to make that 20 seconds. I'm sorry, so I'm going to have to go zero, two, zero. Oops, now I see it's 20 minutes, 20 seconds. That's not what I wanted. So let's try that again. Zero, zero, two, zero. Now it's 20 seconds. So you want to verify that and take a look again. Okay. And then scroll down. And you just push it until you get to where you want and just keep moving right along. So that's how you change a program, and if you're going to change a program, change 6 or 7. If you're going to use programs 6 or 7, make sure that whoever before you may have used those um, has some parameters that are similar to what you want. Or, you know, you might want to go through and check that everything is, hasn't, something important hasn't been changed. All right, so now I'm going to um, exit this um, editing program. So I'm going to actually push exit. Makes sense. Okay, so we want to go to start process. So I'm going to scroll up to one and then I'm going to push enter. Okay, so I have this all completely spelled out on this um, standing instructions exactly what I'm saying now. So you know you can follow along and do the same thing but really, if you just fool with this, it makes, it's going to make sense to you. The experiment means nothing. So we just kind of ignore that. So then I push enter. Program is important. The program we have here, it says program 2. Program 2 is a medium stain, as I have on my chart here. And um, I think that's good for my control slide, so I'm going to stick with that. If I wanted to change it, I would change it to whatever... Um, program number I wanted. If I was just deparaphrasing, I'd change it to four. Enter. 
um, start step one. This is important also. What if you had frozen sections and you didn't um, want to deparaffinize? And you didn't want it to start way over in step one, deparaffinizing in xylene substitute. You wanted it to start from the water and then um, go into hematoxylin. This is where you would uh, make that change. You would tell it to start in step um, 20 or 21, whatever water you were wanting it to go into. And that's where you make that change. For our purposes, we want it to start in the xylene substitute. And we're going to have it starting at program 1, which is exactly what it says. So we'll push enter. So pretty much for everything here, you're going to press enter unless you change the program. Okay, so now it's at, it says start. It's got a question mark. And we'll push start, the big green start button. And there it goes, and the arm moves over to where we want it to go. Now in about um, 20 minutes to a half an hour, this will be done. It'll end up in this, um, this clear here, this um, xylene substitute at the very end is where it'll end up. Okay, so now we see that the stainer is almost completed with its staining. Also, I just wanted to let you know, I'm just, I have this hood open for demonstration purposes, um, but normally this hood is completely closed. Oh, now that I'm thinking of it, while this is finishing up in the last 20 seconds, or 30 seconds, back in here is a carbonate, carbon filter. You can see it's moving to its next station. And then it's going to do several beeps that it's completed its staining. Um, this carbon filter, I have extra ones. It's in the um, same room where the cryostat is in the scope room. So all you do is you open up this um, part here. It's real easy with that little button there. You open it up, you take this um, cardboard filter out, and discard it, and put the new one in. It's probably about ready to have that, that done. You need to do that every year. What that is, actually, it's not so important for this um, stainer anymore because I don't use xylene. Okay, let's take a look at this menu again. Now we have operation is telling you we can have this go up or we can have it go home. Now a lot of people have been um, wait for it to do its beeping thing. Seems like it beeps for like 30 seconds. Okay, now a lot of people have been just making this arm just go up and it just stays up over this um, clear, this um, xylene substitute. Um, you know, I don't do that. I want it to go back to its home position. So what I actually do is I kind of remove the this um, rack slightly from the arm and I scroll down to the number two and then I push enter and it'll go home. If I have three racks, I kind of loosen them all and just kind of quickly take them off. And it goes to the home position. Okay. So now we take this um, bucket in and we go and we cover slip our stained slides. Or, um, you know, our um, counter stained slides or whatever it was that we chose for this to do. So I put the lid on it and I walk it into the hood in the back and we go and cover slip it. In the meantime, we're finished with this um, auto stainer. So I'm going to cover all these buckets. Now I'm actually going to cover all these buckets before I remove the water because I don't want to accidentally get water into one of these um, other buckets. So I see. Okay. So I'm covering all these buttons, I mean these buckets. Anyway, what, what I was just thinking about ran across in my mind was, um, I just want to say one more thing about this, but you don't need to zoom in on it. Um, if you wanted to manually stop this machine, it's actually quite easy. Let's say you made a mistake. It's like, oh no, that's not the stain program I wanted, or did I pick the correct one? All you simply have to do is... Um, I actually take, remember how I showed you I loosened up the, um, the racks off the arm, is I actually might even um, either loosen them up off the arm or um, 
whatever needs to be done. You can actually change a stain program in the middle of the programming, in the middle of it starting if you wanted to, and actually change it or edit a program in the middle of it staining. You can fool with this machine, get the manual, and you can see how to do all of that. If you need to completely discontinue a staining run, just simply push stop and um, follow the instructions from there. The menu is very self-explanatory. Just really look at it and read what it has to say and it'll tell you what to do. Okay. Make sure these are seated nicely. Never start this again. Never start the stainer with um, the lids on. Even if you're doing just deparaffinizing and you only need this first row, still take the lids off so you don't jam, accidentally jam the arm. Okay. Now you can even take the sheet off of the um, our um, reagent rotation log or replacement log and, and double check yourself that you've placed the reagents in the right spots because it perfectly matches where they should be. Which reminds me, we also need to write on that sheet that we change this for the next person so they can take a look and like, when was the last time this thing was changed or rotated? Very similar to the actual processor, the tissue processor. This one, the most critical um, chemicals on this, or reagents on this stainer are the um, xylene substitute and the 100% alcohols. Those are critical. And so if you have doubt about the stainer and its um, freshness, you can either rotate the um, clearing agents or in these 100% alcohols or um, really the 100% alcohol closest to the xylene substitute should be the freshest. And, um, and you know, you can rotate these. The, again, down at this end, the 100% alcohol closest to the xylene substitute should be the freshest. Those are the, probably the most critical. And the, then the actual stains themselves are pretty critical. And that's it. That's our automatic stainer. Oops, let me get these out of here. Now you can just dump these. And put them over here on the paper towel so we don't have a lot of mold. You close it all up and turn it off. Make sure to always cover these reagents because if you come back um, the next day, they'll be quite a bit evaporated and um, you'll see your hematoxylin and eosin kind of crystallized around the edges. So you want to keep it covered. And I'm going to turn the machine off. And that's our auto stainer.